Welcome back to America's Commercial Real Estate Show. I'm Michael Bull, and this segment is brought to you by Bull Realty Asset and Occupancy Solutions. Visit bullrealty.com. Our show today is the Trump effect on the economy and commercial real estate. And, uh, you know, it really should maybe be the Job and Tax Act impact on commercial real estate and, and all the things that Trump has been doing. My guest is Adam Kamins, and Adam is senior economist with Moody's Analytics. And, Adam, we talked to uh, about some of the things that's changing, some of the impacts that it could have on jobs, uh, on cap rates, on interest rates and things. But what are some tips that you would leave us with, Adam, related to maybe uh, use of real estate, financing of real estate, investment, development? What do you say? Sure. Sure. I think what... When I think about kind of what this, what this means kind of more broadly and where, where the economy is going, uh, I think the the multifamily market might be you know kind of the the best opportunity that's out there right now in some sense at least as a result of kind of what's what's going on with the tax bill and and what it means for the broader economy and I say that as someone who has been watching the apartment market you know concerned that it, it looks a bit you know overvalued that its trajectory has seemed unsustainable and I think there's there's truth to that but uh, the fact that uh, when we look at kind of you know how how we're looking at the world and and what the results of this tax law are going to be on the single family market, uh, it's going to take a little while for that to be fully capitalized into prices. But our expectation is that in, in some markets you could see you know prices that that are significantly worse than they would have been absent this tax bill. We're talking in some cases you know five to 10% lower than they would have been uh, absent the, the tax bill. And that could mean outright declines in some markets. And uh, what I think that overall, you know, kind of the overall dynamics are going to be, are going to be, you know, ones that are going to require some, some homeowners to, to rethink or potential homeowners to rethink whether they really want to enter into the home, the, the home ownership market. That, you know, the incentives, sort of the subsidies that have existed to, for homeowners are not going to be quite as strong. Uh, and that should actually have a little bit of a, of a positive impact on demand for the rental market. And we've actually seen kind of more broadly the trend has been that, you know, the home ownership rate, which has been falling for, you know, for, for many years, has kind of leveled off of late and has actually begun to creep upward a little bit. I think we might see that uh, maybe kind of begin to, to shift a little bit down again uh, as, as a result of some of the, some of the uh, changes to yeah. the tax code. Yeah, well, it makes sense, especially a lot of the stuff that you talked about on the last segment. Uh, you know, if we have additional job growth uh, from infrastructure and from corporate tax reductions, uh, can be really good for the apartment market. Adam, is there another sector that you think was favorably impacted by all of this? I think the uh, the industrial sector could could get a, a little bit of a boost as well. Uh, you look at the what lower corporate tax rates mean, and I think. You know, especially having talked about the, the tight labor market and the fact that maybe the impact on job growth is not as great as uh, some people might might be hoping for, uh, where some of that that additional money will go is uh, towards investment in, in, in capital and machinery, uh, and I think that that could be a real benefit uh, to to firms in the industrial space, whether it's manufacturers or firms in, in logistics, and you, know, you kind of compound that with the fact that any kind of short-term stimulus that, that puts more money in consumers' pockets and leads to more spending, uh, kind of in the old world, we would think of that as being a benefit to retail. Right. Um, but in kind of the, the paradigm where we are now, that, that really is uh, maybe as much a benefit to industrial because, you know, many people are going to be using this extra money to make purchases on Amazon or, you know, on, on their, their favorite retailer's website. And uh, that's just going to be more and more demand for, for, you know, warehousing and other types of industrial space that, you know, I, th I think that, you know, we've already seen really, really strong growth in that area over the last few years. And I think this, this will give kind of an additional boost over the next year or two there. Yeah, well, that makes a lot of sense. And uh, what about REITs, Adam? Uh, you know, we work with a, a lot of REITs and, uh, and maybe a lot of our uh, listeners and viewers are actually investing in REITs. What's the impact for them? Uh, the, there are a number of, of favorable provisions for, for REITs as well in terms of kind of what the, what the law means uh, for, for 
for how interest is being treated and how uh, pass-through income and, and other sort of aspects of, of income that's generated by REITs is created. So uh, generally speaking, the outlook, the outlook for REITs would, would, would look a little bit better uh, than, than it had beforehand. Okay. Adam, a closing tip for our listeners? No, I think the only thing I would sort of close with is that, you know, sort of enjoy, enjoy the benefits while it lasts over these next couple of years, but I would just kind of caution everyone to sort of keep, keep a wary eye out because the, the, sort of the idea of, the, of creating all of these new jobs and investment is, is, you know, really exciting in the short run. Commercial real estate is going to really benefit in the next year or two, uh, but the, sort of the provisions of the bill mean that um, there is kind of increased risk of, of bubbles forming, of some more frothiness kind of generally in the economy, and I think the commercial real estate market could be kind of at the center of that. So, you know, I think the, the good times are definitely going to continue to roll and probably, you know, roll a lot more forcefully in the next year, year and a half. But, but after that, just sort of, I, I would say it probably is going to be time to be start, you know, starting to think about kind of bubble watch. Yeah, that's interesting. Adam, great information. Thanks for joining us. Of course, my pleasure, Michael. And thank you for joining us out there across the country, whether you're on iTunes or YouTube, the show website, and I think we're on about 14 different podcast sites now. We certainly appreciate you being with us. And, and if you will, comment and uh, connect with us on our social media sites. You can find them all at CREshow.com. Until next week, be sure that you always lead, learn, and laugh, and join us for America's Commercial Real Estate Show.